Tissue Doppler Imaging measures the velocity of myocardial motion using Doppler principles. The usual Doppler echocardiography measures the velocity of blood flow using the Doppler signals from the fast moving blood cells which are of low amplitude. Tissue Doppler measures low velocity high amplitude signals from myocardial motion. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. Tissue Doppler is not able to differentiate between passive motion and active motion due to fiber shortening. But strain imaging is able to do so. Color coded tissue Doppler imaging is sometimes called color kinesis. Pulsed wave TDI is useful to measure myocardial velocities in the long axis as the movement is parallel to the Doppler beam. Mitral annular TDI has three waves SA systolic myocardial velocity, EA early diastolic myocardial velocity and AA myocardial velocity during atrial contraction. While imaging from the epical view, systolic velocities are positive and diastolic velocities are negative. Systolic velocity at the lateral mitral annulus correlates with the longitudinal systolic function of the left ventricle. Diastolic velocities depend on ventricular diastolic function. TDI assessment of diastolic function is load independent compared to the conventional measurement using mitral inflow velocities which are highly sensitive to preload. Tissue Doppler imaging at the level of the mitral annulus septal side illustrating EA and AA EA is also called E prime to differentiate from mitral inflow velocity. A in EA stands for annulus. EM is used to indicate myocardial. E by E prime measurement is used to assess diastolic function by tissue Doppler. Method may vary in technical details between machines. In low level machines, we have to measure both E from mitral flow Doppler and E prime from tissue Doppler at the septal mitral annulus level and calculate the ratio manually. In other machines as illustrated in this image E is measured initially and stored. After that E prime is measured and the machine automatically calculates the E by E prime ratio marked by green arrow at the top left corner in this image. The high E by E prime ratio in this case indicates left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. E by E prime at lateral mitral annulus more than 10 and E by E prime more than 15 at the septal mitral annulus indicates left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. E by E prime values less than 8 would indicate normal left ventricular diastolic function. The yellow tracing is pulsed wave tissue Doppler imaging. First negative wave is the mitral E prime. The next negative wave after E prime occurs during atrial contraction and is designated AA. The positive wave after AA is the SA wave representing the systolic myocardial wave recorded as the annulus descends towards the apex. SA at the lateral mitral annulus is a measure of the longitudinal systolic function and correlates with left ventricular ejection fraction. Septal E prime is slightly lower than lateral E prime. Measurement of E prime is useful in differentiation of pseudo normalization in the mitral inflow from the normal pattern. Neguye and associates studied 35 patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy by simultaneous cardiac catheterization and echocardiography. They concluded that LV filling pressures can be estimated with fair accuracy in patients with HCM by measuring E by EA. Changes in LV filling pressures can also be tracked by changes in the ratio. Stress tissue Doppler imaging or stress echo with tissue Doppler. An important limitation with stress tissue Doppler imaging is the technical challenge of acquiring both two dimensional and tissue Doppler echocardiographic information during exercise. Peak myocardial systolic velocity SA increases with both exercise and dobutamine stress. Tissue Doppler techniques can identify abnormal segments in a better way than two dimensional echo and has a better reproducibility than it. Peak velocities 5.5 cm per second or less can identify abnormal segments 
with a sensitivity of 96% and specificity of 81%. Tissue Doppler derived atrial conduction time. Total atrial conduction time denotes the total period required for atrial activation. Conventionally, it is measured using signal average electrocardiogram as the maximal P wave duration. It has been shown to be a powerful predictor of atrial fibrillation. A simpler method which can be done in any echo lab without the use of signal averaged ECG is a tissue Doppler and surface ECG combined measurement of atrial activation. PATDI is measured from the onset of P wave on the surface ECG to the tissue Doppler derived PK wave at the lateral left atrial wall. PATDI has been shown to predict new onset atrial fibrillation, recurrence of AF after catheter ablation, AF after acute myocardial infarction, and even AF after cardiac surgery. Cardiac surgeries in which PATDI has been successfully used to predict AF include coronary artery bypass grafting, aortic valve replacement for aortic stenosis, and surgery for mitral regurgitation. In mitral regurgitation, prediction of AF is very important as the left atrium is very large. Onset of AF after relief of mitral regurgitation jet, which had a cleansing action on the left atrium, may lead to thrombus formation and increase the risk of stroke and other systemic embolism. Here are a couple of references on tissue Doppler imaging. Second set of references are here. Third set of references. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.